Jonathan Mills from London, England. I wondered if you could comment on the views of those people who have stated that because of so-called conflicts of interest, you should leave the board of Coca-Cola and whether you had any intention of doing so. That we should do what with the board? Le leave the board. That you personally should leave the board oh. of Coke. Uh, I would say that whoever suggested that should do 500 setups. <laughs> no, I, actually, Charlie and I, certainly I have, well, I'll let Charlie speak for himself. We, we like the idea, and we've, we've encouraged the idea of shareholders behaving like owners. I mean, shareholder, shareholders have too often behaved like sheep in this country, and, and, uh, and they uh, got shorn in many cases. Uh, and big institutional shareholders have, have sat on the sidelines while some things that might possibly have been corrected had they gotten active uh, took place. And so we have, we actually applaud the idea of uh, shareholders behaving like owners. The question is whether they, you know, can behave like intelligent owners. And I think that in the last year or two, as they've sort of woken up, uh, they've searched for checklists of one sort or another to determine whether directors are, are, are appropriate in a given company or not. And, and frankly, a checklist are no substitute for thinking. Uh, the real job of the directors is to come up with the right CEO for a company and prevent him or her from overreaching. I, if they do that job well, the rest takes care of itself. And you have to think some to determine whether that's taking place. You can't solve it by just running down a little checklist. Uh, I think it was Bertrand Russell who said, most men would rather die than think. Many do. Uh, and I think we've seen a little bit of what he was thinking about uh, in some of the voting. I think it's absolutely silly, frankly. Uh, if Berkshire Hathaway owns 200 million shares of Coca-Cola, $10 billion worth, uh, to not be able, uh, it's a little silly not to think that the interest that Berkshire Hathaway has in selling some hours of training at flight safety or something would cause me to do something counter to the interests of the shareholders when we have $10 billion riding on that side of the table. I mean, it's, it's almost absurd, and somebody doesn't understand proportionality at all uh, when they come to that sort of conclusion. I also think it's absolutely foolish uh, if, just to use Coca-Cola as an example, I think the directors of Coca-Cola haven't even looked, but I think we probably receive something like $100,000 a year, and if, if we were to go out into uh, on the welfare line and pick somebody out who has no income and say, we'd like you to become a director, and that person would get $100,000 a year, which would be their entire income. And to say that person would be independent, you know, while they would be 100 percent dependent on their income, that person would be independent, whereas Berkshire Hathaway or myself representing Berkshire Hathaway with $10 billion of stock uh, and receiving the same $100,000 a year as, is, is uh, not regarded in that. Uh, so I encourage, I encourage institutional shareholders to, and large owners to, to behave like owners, but I also encourage them to really think logically as owners should think uh, in determining what causes they take on and how they vote. Charlie? Yeah, I think that they, Corporate America needs a fair amount of reform, but the cause of reform is hurt, not helped, when uh, an activist makes an idiotic suggestion, <laughs> to the, like the one that, that, that having Warren Buffett on the board of the Coca-Cola Company is contrary to the interests of the Coca-Cola Company. Nutty activities do not help the cause forever for which the person speaks. It's a little bit like having uh, a slicing machine in, a, in an orchard where you're gathering together apples, but you're also picking up a lot of rocks in the process. And 
sticks and stones. So you have a slicing machine with a conveyor belt, and the slicing machine is programmed so that every time something that's red and round comes down the line, it slices it and comes down, but it doesn't come down on the rocks and everything and ruin the blades. And of course, that's fine until a red balloon comes down the line, and then you get a big pop, and the machine has, has followed its little guidelines, but it, it's not slicing apples anymore. And uh, I think, uh, I just, I, I, actually institutions are coming new to really thinking about how they behave as owners, and you would hope that in the evolutionary nature of, of, of learning that not too many years distance they would, distant they would actually think about what's good for the shareholders of the company.